So welcome to today's video and in this video I will show you a wrist MRI with a tumor and we want to kind of like find out what kind of tumor it is just based on imaging alone. So let's dive right in. The case was posted on Collective Minds. So let me just share my screen and we can see the MRI here. It was posted here and the query was wrist swelling. This was the clinical presentation and the question by the clinician at the time was whether this was a ganglion cyst or not. So let's have a look at the case here. I will also post this video as a response to this case here on Collective Mind and I will also post a link to the case below the video so you can find the case and go through the images on your own. So that's something I'm trying out now. Okay, so we can easily identify the mass here. This is not the diagnostic challenge. We can see there's a big mass here on the molar ulnar side of the wrist, sharply delineated with T1 muscle iso intense signal. So the muscle is quite the same signal as the mass. And then we want to check the other sequences uh, there too. We can also briefly check on the other planes here where the tumor is located. So here it's between the ulna, the distal ulna and the flexor carpi ulnaris here. And we can see it's kind of like sharp. It has kind of like a dumbbell appearance a little bit here. It's kind of like bulging a little bit out here because of the size it has and the tendon kind of like compressing it a little bit. Then uh, we can see it's not in a muscle. It's mostly surrounded by fat tissue. Uh, that's for the location here. Then the signal on this presumably PD fat set here is quite heterogeneous. It has some lower signal at, uh, components. It's otherwise more or less bright, but it's certainly not cystic. So I think that's the main thing here uh, to identify. This is not a cyst and it gets easy, even easier on the T2 here where we can see there is, uh, you can see the fluid is actually bright. So we have a low signal mass sharp delineated here um, and it's not cystic, it's very low, so some form of fibrotic component to it. And that's basically uh, for the signal. Unfortunately, there is no contrast study, so we cannot see whether there is enhancement or not. They did some diffusion imaging here, and there seems to be a little bit of a you know, diff restricted diffusion uh, here. But I'm never using this, so uh, I cannot really, with the low ADC values, but I cannot really um, be sure, like, because I, it doesn't help me because we never did it and I don't think how, unless there is a clear T2 shine through or something, it doesn't really help me in my differential thinking. Um, one thing we need to know is which structures are close to it. And for that, we have a 3D here, which we can use. So we can see we have the ulnar nerve here. So we want to make sure we are not looking at a, a nerve sheath tumor or some neurogenic tumor. So we can see the ulnar nerve right there. We follow it all along. It, it gets displaced by the mass. It's separated by this fat layer here. Even here, we see the joint caps, or not the joint capsule, the capsule, we see the nerve here, all the nerve. Some areas it has contact to the nerve, so that's something we need to describe. This will be relevant for surgery. And then we can see the ulnar nerve coming in here, and then branching off of the deep ulnar branch, uh, and then here the superficial branches then going in this direction. So it only has a little bit of contact, but it's certainly not the origin of the mass. Then again, on this uh, image here, we can see it's a very, on the T2, it's a very low signal uh, that we have already established on all the T2 series. You can see fluid is bright and this is very dark. So we have a low signal tumor. And whenever I see something like this, the differentials or in terms of the composition of the mass is always the same. I'm thinking of PVNAS, gout, amyloid, some other fibrotic tumor, scar, um, or anything that contains more fibrosis than would be normally uh, expected. So another good thing that they did here actually was this series here. This is some form of a gradient uh, echo series and you can see the mass here shows quite substantial spotty susceptibility artifacts at the periphery predominantly but also in some other locations quite extensive here. So that means we have uh, hemosiderine or some form of um, stuff in there which creates these artifacts. It could also be calcifications, but we don't see the same amount of, um, you know, the, the same amount of low signal stuff on the T1. So that means we don't really have calcifications in here. That would be very unusual. Normally, if the calcifications would show such a low signal on the gradient series, we would also expect to see this more as a calcified lesion in the T1. So I don't think we would expect or would see calcifications on the radiograph. And this basically helps us also in putting this into a, a, a bracket. So based on the findings, we have a mass here near the joint, on the tendons, etc. with blooming artifacts, low signal on T2, or generally low signal. 
indicating that this is most likely a tenosynovial giant cell tumor and that's what the differential would be so most like consistent with the giant cell tumor uh, of the tendon sheath so pvns basically and yeah that would be the assessment of the case i would recommend in my report to finish the study or with additional post contrast scans because we want to know is this enhancing or not this helps us for biopsy planning so potentially there is a large necrotic component here with no enhancement so we don't want to do the biopsy here we would want a biopsy where we see enhancement and if there is only maybe one nodule etc which would show some enhancement here then we would make sure the biopsy actually goes into that area where we have uh, enhancement otherwise we might not get a diagnostic sample out of this and also it's nice for follow-up exams like if this gets resected and they will have to resect it then you will have a better understanding of the primary behavior of the tumor like is it enhancing how vivid is it enhancing and this will help you later to separate this uh, from scar and recurrence like if you go here and you get some low signal scar after surgery you don't really know like is this just scar or not but if the tumor shows vivid enhancement and the follow-up scan only have low signal but no enhancement then you have a better chance to separate scar and fibrosis from surgery or whatever treatment they will choose from recurrence uh, in even a case like tenosynovial giant cell tumor yeah okay that's uh, it so let's go back here so let me know how you like this video and um, if you have any questions feel free to also come over to collective minds and discuss the case with us there uh, or also here on on youtube if you want to thanks for watching and i'll see you with the next case bye bye